So my name is Kristen Berg. I am with the UW Center for Tobacco Research and Intervention, as well as General Internal Medicine. And uh, I think one of the big issues that I've noticed in primary care is that while we try to keep counseling people on quitting smoking, we have a really hard time because there's not really been any new therapies or counseling strategies that have come out really in the last decade. Varenicline was the newest medication that's come out, and again, that's already 10 years since it's been out. And so I think people are starting to look at newer combinations of therapies, and one of those combinations is varenicline and nicotine replacement. Um, so the thought is, is that varenicline really targets one specific receptor, and then the ni added nicotine replacement therapies will get some of those other accessory pathways that varenicline might miss. So we at UW Seatree uh, did a pilot study looking at triple therapy. We looked at varenicline, nicotine patch, and nicotine lozenge. Um, people, a couple of groups have studied just varenicline and nicotine patch and have showed equivocal results. So we took it one step further. But first we wanted to make sure that it was a tolerable therapy and no safety concerns. So we reached out to 40 individuals, or we had a target size of 40. Uh, we ended up getting 36 people to enroll, and they came in, uh, got started on their varenicline, and then one week later had their quit day, so when they stopped smoking. They started on their nicotine replacement, so their patch and their lozenge at the same time as their quit day. And then we followed them weekly for four weeks, and then every other week for another two months, for a total of three months. And what we saw was that there were really quite a lot of adverse events that people experienced with this therapy. But we were specifically asking every time we called them if they were having any of these adverse events. So we think that that probably increased the number of times people were saying yes. The good part was that most of the events were mild or moderate. Um, quite a few people did need to change therapies or modify their therapies based on their adverse events. About half of the participants ended up changing medications in response to some of the side effects. But there were no safety concerns, no hospitalizations, no cardiac events. And quit rates were really pretty high, almost 60% at the end of the 12 weeks. Again, that's self-report. Uh, and we didn't ask for any follow-up data, so I only have the 12-week data. But overall, people really enjoyed and really felt satisfied about this medication regimen. So high satisfaction rates when they started the medicines and even higher when they quit. So definitely a couple of limitations to consider. It was just a pilot study. Uh, there was no comparison or control group. And we had a lot of contact with these patients, so we're not sure. We, can't, we couldn't disentangle if the higher quit rates were from the medications or from our almost weekly phone calls with these individuals. But I think definitely a promising potential therapy that you might hear more about in the future.